Hey everybody, Dr. Rob here. Hope everybody's having a great day. Thursday, again, we're gonna do some COVID-19 updates today. A lot of people have uh, a lot of uh, information that they've been asking for, but I really wanna give you some information, some more updates on what's going on. And then we know I'm gonna answer all your questions. For me, um, you know, I'm mosing along. I'm busy as a beaver. We already did uh, two different webinars uh, this morning. We had one um, with the UK at eight o'clock. We went from eight to 10. And then we did another one from 10.30 to 11. Had a quick FaceTime, got myself ready, and I'm here. I've got um, some live podcasts. In addition, I'll be back on at four o'clock today to talk about the antibody test with the owner and also the science officer of KBMO. We're gonna be talking about the antibody test and why you wanna take it and what it means. It's just a means of giving you more information. So again, feel free to do a shout out. We love our shout outs. Ask the question. I've got someone looking specifically for questions. Did we have anybody say hi? Mike Apollo. Hey Mike, how are you? Get those questions ready. I know you had a whole onslaught from uh, your patients. As you know, Creator Chiropractic and I, we. Um, we all work together here at Creative Chiropractic, Dr. Mike Powell and Dr. Mike Warren, Medford, Oregon, a great bunch of guys. So let's go in and get some information. U.S. COVID-19 hospitalizations, the number one comorbidity for hospitalizations, a very close number one was um, hypertension, 49.7% um, of people who were hospitalized had one comorbidity of hospitalization, 48.3% of obesity. So as we all know, that's probably the rate of, <coughs> that's probably the rate of obesity in um, America today. So number one, hypertension. Number two, obesity. <coughs> Those allergies are getting me today. 35% of people had a comorbidity of chronic lung conditions. Number one chronic lung condition is asthma. And then we've got just below that 28% had diabetes and 28% had CBD. The reasons if you <clears throat> add those numbers up together and they are more than 100, is there are people who were admitted, admitted to the hospital that had more than one comorbidity. So once again, number one hypertension, about 50%, almost 50% obesity, 35% chronic lung like asthma, and 28% diabetes and CVD. Virtually all of these can be helped with lifestyle, adding a proper lifestyle. Obesity, clearly, hypertension, great argument for. We actually talked about that yesterday in reference to keeping gut health, that gut to hypertension link, if you will. Chronic lung and asthma, as we all know, asthma and allergies are a form of a little uh, break in our immune system. Uh, and again, diabetes and CBD, clearly, we know we can help greatly with a good change in lifestyle. Lifestyle, once again, pertaining to good diet, supplements, exercise, and meditation, yoga, and the such. The hospitalization rates, this is where it got a little tricky. Go ahead. Linnea Batiste. Hello, hello, Linnea Batiste. How are you? Uh, hi, Dr. Silverman. You always talk about the importance of gut health. Would that help with improving the immune system? And which supplements do you suggest to take to help with gut health? <clears throat> you know what? That's a great question. So I'm going to write that down. So you call them out, and I'm going to write them and answer the question. So gut health and... How will it help? Uh, how does it help? With the immune system, and which supplements do you suggest to take? Okay, you ask the questions. I'm going to write them down, and I'm going to answer them. I'm going to put them down on my handy-dandy little pad. So I'm going to answer them. You keep asking them because we're just going to cover a couple of quick things and we're going to get right into them. So, Ms. Batiste, you just hold on. Hospitalization rates. 45% of the people that went to the hospital were what they would deem non-Hispanic Caucasian. 33% were not Hispanic, Black, or African American. So it's very clear, and it's a discussion that everybody's having, the Black populations might be disproportionately affected by COVID-19. Now, when we're talking just pure age and not um, ethnicity, 43% of uh, people 65 and older that were in, the number one reason they went to the hospital was hypertension. 31% of 50 to 64 my age, number one reason they went is obesity. And 25% is 18 to 49. And that's a glaring 18 to 49, the young people. It was classified as not getting, going after young people. It's not correct. Young people are suffering from it too. 
just not to the same rate as others. And again, obesity was the most common issue. So from 65 and under, obesity, over 65, hypertension. The average hospitalization rate lasts for seven days. Number one complaint, again, once they're hospitalized, they're hospitalized because of shortness of breath. And that's actually from MMWR. Do we have any other questions? Mike wants to know, Paul, can you speak to the proactive lifestyle changes versus reactive measures that after infection? My laptop's not working, otherwise I've been reading all of them as we went. I wrote that down. The last thing that I want to share, keep having the questions in and the call outs come in. We're doing it. We're going to answer all the questions at one time. Hospitals now, three hospitals in New York. We had said something about a vitamin C um, IV. U.S. hospitals now are adapting high levels of intravenous vitamin C getting good results on avoiding people on getting ventilators. It was just published. In addition to that, some of the hospitals are also adapting vitamin C, IV, with ozone and supplemental vitamin D. So for me, if somebody asked me, and I could, I would definitely want to uh, get, get a, do a medical doctor to uh, inject vitamin C, vitamin D, and maybe some great glutathione. That would be great. So what they're finding out that this vitamin C infusion is helping with acute respiratory distress syndrome. So they're not having using the ventilator. So, I mean, for me, this is an epiphany because the medical doctors are doing such a great job. They're first responding, they're helping people, they're putting themselves in harm's way. But having said that, um, I think now I, I would like to see, and I hope even more people more medical, using these IVs till they get something substantial, a drug, a vaccine, and having this as an option, it's truly growing, and um, we only can hope they adapt more. So we've got some more questions. Mike Powell says, for vitamin C, who came up with that? Oh, IV vitamin C. <laughs> so Mike's referring to, he was on a webinar, so Mike asked, who came up with the idea of vitamin C? IV. I IV. I, I, you know, um, I did a webinar last Saturday and we talked about vitamin C and I talked about it with some of the medical doctors because as a chiropractor, I'm not allowed to inject. And they asked, what do you think of vitamin C? And I said, I think it's great. I'm all my patients, I recommend it. If you guys have somebody sick and put an IV in, go for it. And um, in that one hospital, they implemented it. So it was nice to hear and nice to see that they did that. Hector Martinez. Hey, Hector. Do you have a link for the high dose vitamin C being used in New York that you may share? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll put it up. I actually didn't write it on my paper. I'll, I'll get you. So, uh, remember, Mike, re Mike Powell, remember that link that I need to get them for sure. Solmer asks, I'm taking 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C daily in ascorbic acid form. Is that okay? Ascorbic acid is the form, uh, normally, vitamin C, ascorbic acid. One gram would be good if you're trying to <coughs> ward off, excuse me, some lung issues. My recommendation is two to four grams or a gram every two to four hours. Lauren Marks, DC, but unfortunately Johns Hopkins Hospital is not using vitamin C, very vitamin phobic. Yeah, you know, Lauren, hey, how's my good buddy? Nobody knows SIBO better than Dr. Marks, good buddy of mine down in New York City, great functional medicine chiropractor, friend. Um, yeah, I, it, you know, John Hopkins is such an eclectic hospital, it's sad to see that. Um, clearly the literature is robust on it. Mike Powell asked a great question about proactive lifestyle versus reactive. So I think what the question really um, is trying to uh, ask is let, how do we avoid it and what kind of exercise do we do if we happen to be COVID-19 positive? So number one, uh, good, good style exercise. We definitely remember that immune system with exercise is in that J curve. A little bit, not enough. Too much, too high intense, too much decreases your immune system. Hitting it right in the middle, high intense interval training like a Tabata, which is 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, eight rounds, great exercise. Walking is a great exercise. Body weight. Here, you know, I see people on the internet now taking big bottles of water and gallons of water in, in those um, uh, Poland Springs or whatever they're called, Crystal Rock 
uh, barrels, if you will. They're not barrels, but they're big bottles. And they're lifting them and they're walking with them. I saw Arnold uh, take one barbell and, and, and do a little uh, Facebook video where he went like in, my, in his backyard and was just lifting it all different ways. So time to be creative, time to get back to what, how people used to work out instead of all the machines and everything. My workout yesterday was um, uh, a bunch of burpees, walking lunges. I have some dumbbells, so I did some thrusters and then I finished off with man makers and I was toast. I was toast. Now the question post, you need to scale it down because you're obviously not going to feel that well. So as you're coming out of the COVID-19 and this is all what I recommend, this is not proven literature because we, we just don't have any with this novel virus. I would start exercising slowly, get up and walking. If you're not uh, short of breath walking, continue to push forward. And then if you can walk and get to a brisk walk, maybe get into a run and start incorporating after that some body weight exercises. Did we have some other shout outs? Uh, Jennifer Uso. Hey Jen, how are you? Water is life. Water is life without question. And now in a bottle or a big bottle, you can lift it up. So we had another question on gut health. How does it help immune health? 80% of our immune cells are in our gut. We talk about that all the time. And it's where our macro and micronutrients are um, absorbed. So you need to keep your gut in pristine condition. Good ways to keep your gut in pristine condition is good quality foods. Avoid a lot of sugar, dairy, uh, gluten, of course. Uh, I don't, uh, no processed food. So just as an FYI, I may have not said this before, tofu is a processed food, so no tofu. You want to eat fruits, vegetables, uh, ancient grains, your proteins coming from tempeh, wild fish, uh, and grass-fed beefs. Uh, the, the real reason that your gut is 80% uh, of your immune cells are in your gut, it also speaks to the idea of your gut communicates with so many different organs and organ systems. Your gut communicates with your brain in a bi-directional manner, goes up and comes down. Your gut communicates with your liver. Your gut communicates with your pancreas. Your gut, yesterday we discussed, has an affect for um, hypertension. So gut health is something that we should talk about and gut health also increases, Dr. Marks will like this, SIBO without question, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. So as long as we keep our gut in good condition, we're going to have a strong immune system. So much literature has come out now with the people with COVID-19 having damage to the gut, having the virus in the gut, having the virus pass in the stool even though people are negative. So gut health is one great additional starting point. Mike wants to know what is the best topical disinfectant for patients who are sensitive to bleach. Um, we use ionized water. We're using, saline. we're using ionized water with, uh, it's, a spray. It's, a it's a spray. Actually, I'm going to get it right now. Um, pass it through. Terrific. So let me hold it right there. It's called clean smart. It's ionized water with saline. It disinfects 99.9%. It disinfects 99.9%. Uh, there you go. And of course, it's ionized water and uh, a whole bunch of other things in there. And alcohol is great. Seventy-five percent alcohol is a sweet spot, sixty to eighty. And of course, you know, don't forget the good old soap and water. And we know why. We've talked about it. Do we have any additional questions? Yeah. Or the World Health Organization is seeing an increase in transmission in the home in Europe. What measures should you be taking as we stay home and stay safe? Uh, great question. World Health Organization has seen an increased transmission at home. Well, the question is, um, obviously, if one of us go outside, we can get exposed. So that's one of the reasons. My suggestion is to disinfect. So, for instance, um, today um, we, we had a package. So we did all the disinfectant, left the package outside, opened it up, <coughs> wore the gloves, and... Um, brought the material inside, disinfected it, opened it up, and left everything outside for 24 hours or more. Um, we're always cleaning. We're always disinfecting. Um, if, if the wife goes to Whole Foods, she'll go to either Whole Foods today, tomorrow, to go get food. Everything's going to be disinfected. It's funny. I got a whole bunch of questions sent in about food and, and uh, viruses. We're going to get to that. So, yes, it makes sense because people go outside. We forget that I'm coughing, I don't have it, fortunately. But if you have it in your cough, it's 23 to 27 feet. So we're all gonna be exposed. The best thing is to keep ourselves in the, the best working order and our immune system strong. Hector Martinez, looking forward to your laser seminar. Great webinar last week through FMU. 
Thanks. I appreciate it. We have a laser seminar. Um, we're doing one on Tuesday. Um, we're going to cover how the laser helps with immune boosting. And Hector, just so you know, um, I don't know if you got the email yet, April 18th at 2 p.m. We're going to do part two and we're going to knock it out of the park for that. Thanks for the shout out. I appreciate it. Um, one, uh, one question, Pierre asked a question, um, and I couldn't answer it. It was just before we we're getting ready for Facebook live. What's your recommended dosage of vitamin K? Well, shameless plug. I have it right here. The recommended dosage of vitamin K is 60 milligrams for 5,000. Um, I use a vitamin D3. Seems like the current products have multiple forms at different dosages. They do. They do. Anywhere from 4 to 10 to 1, K2 to K1. As for zinc, I've heard 50 to 100 milligrams. Sure, that's not a bad dosage. Be careful. Make sure you address your copper issue. For me, zinc citrate, 30 milligrams or more. Um, and is zinc safe for someone who experienced cardiac arrest in the past? My understanding that zinc does not have any damage to cardiac arrest. If you have any other conditions, definitely ask your medical doctor. Do people that have recovered from COVID-19 have antibodies that can be grown for condolescent plasma? Ah, so uh, Dr. Powell asked that um, if we test for the antibodies and tomorrow is our test, so we'll have our blood drawn tomorrow before hopefully we do a live. Um, can they have their antibodies taken for convalescent uh, plasma? My understanding is yes. And that is one of the reasons for me personally that I'm taking it because my mom, as I said yesterday, is going to be 91. And, you know, I'm concerned that my dad does the shopping. What happens if she gets it? You know, she doesn't have any comorbidities other than age. Um, she's on the, on, the, on the path. She's got some CVD and things like that. So, yes, the reason is I want to know if I have it. And I want to know then if I, if I want to share it with friends and family if they need it. So I think that that's the route that they're going. We're seeing a lot more of that in the literature. Are men more at risk than women and why? Yes, men are at more risk than women. And what they have theorized is, not trying to be funny, that men are more susceptible to high blood pressure. And that's the reason. But um, that's all they have so far for the reason. But men are about 50, anywhere from 58 to 61 percent. So about six out of 10 are men. Hogan, LMT, will there be a fee for the webinars? I think you meant the FMU. Yeah, the FMU is free because FMU, Functional Medicine University, big shout out to Dr. Ron Grassanti. We will, um, we will tag him um, there also. So I'll write that down, link for FMU. And um, I think there was a, a link for vitamin C. So FMU, no, it's free. And if you need it, give me your email and I'll send you, I'll send you over the information. He'll sign you up. So no, it, it's on the house. Same thing for the Econia webinar. If somebody wants that link, I'm happy to put that up. Say hi to Tony Calgary. Oh, my friend, Tony, I need some food. Nobody, nobody had, that's Green Life in the Maranac. Big shout out, we eat there all the time. Tony and his son, Mark, and his sons own it. Green Life is great. So if you need anything, Tony, put your phone number down. Tell them about your meal plan. We eat food from there all the time. Sheila. Dr. Eric Nitude out of St. Louis is telling people to take creaming or three to four ounces a day of Schweppes tonic water with 50 to 100 mg zinc every day. What are your thoughts? Um, quinine? Quinine. 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 Okay. Um, sure. Um, I actually heard Dr. Patrick Hannaway. Yes. So I think that's great. I think we've all got these good alternative potions that are better than not doing anything. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Quercetin now is really something we haven't talked about. Heard um, <clears throat> Dr. Patrick Hannaway talk about it yesterday, really being a great anti-inflammatory, uh, antiviral, and uh, your own natural antihistamine. So quercetin has also really come up. You may want to incorporate that. Good study on quercetin and low-level laser shown to increase 25 milligrams of quercetin with low-level laser boost your immune system also. I, I, I mean, the Sheps, Sheps tonic water, sure, why not? I guess he wanted the fizz. The quinine. Quinine. Um, you know, I haven't used any quinine at this point, so I'm going to have to pass on the quinine, but the zinc and the water and, and the, you may be adding some quercetin in, instead of quinine. 
Rizwan, what's the name of the Facebook laser group again, please? Sure. It's, um, I'm hoping I'm saying it right. It's Dr. Robs and, and Dr. Powell. If I say it wrong, please put it in the comment section so they can see it. It's Dr. Robs Laser Mastermind Group. So you'll see it. I'll approve it. Um, you know, as soon as we're off, we sit and have a great healthy lunch. My wife's a stellar cook. Anytime, any place, anybody can get her on the, whatever the channel is against Bobby Flav, I'm betting money on my wife. I want you to know that without question. Trust me. So, um, so that, that's the link for the laser group. Nope. Okay, let's get to one of the first questions we have there and just let me know when something comes in. Can you get COVID-19 from groceries of food? Well, the literature said no. However, here's my suggestion with the groceries and the food. Clearly in the shopping, uh, the food grocery places in the shopping, that's probably where you're going to be most susceptible because people aren't watching their social distance. They may be coughing. If somebody has it on their hands and they're not wearing gloves and they touch the food and put it back, or an employee does that, the virus could conceivably be there. But the virus, believe it or not, they said by eating, doesn't give it. That's what they said. So wash your food. If you wash and cook your food, because the next question is cook your food, it's probably gonna render the virus inactive. Because if that were the case, we'd all have it because we're all eating. So, you know, Green Life I know does a great job. I'm happy Tony was on in making sure all the food is cleaned and then cooked. Everybody's gloved and masked and all sorts of things like that. And if they're not feeling well, they're not allowed in to use an example. So um, I would say get your groceries, be cautious at the, uh, the stores, the Whole Foods or wherever it is that you're going. And after that, you know, clean them appropriately. And after you clean them, cook them. I'm not eating a lot of raw food. That's the only change that I made. Um, do we have any other questions or should I forge ahead? Did you want to pass me something? Thank you. Um, ah, very good. Shrep's tonic water has high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup is without question a no bueno because it's high in the glycemic index. And it appears in the Shrep's tonic water that the doctor mentioned, it probably has a very low amount of quinine the last ingredient. So um, we're going to have to pass on that in retrospect. Do we have another uh, call out? Any other cleaner more effective than water? Uh, soap and water for sure. You're talking, no, um, we use a, um, we use a fruit cleaner. We use a fruit and vegetable cleaner. Yes, but it doesn't, yeah. Fruit and vegetable cleaner, clean it, cook it, not eating raw foods. You haven't seen me, you know, I haven't eaten a salad. Gregory Lomides. Hey Greg, Yasu. As for vegetables, someone told me today, treat vegetables that you are in Mexico, don't eat anything raw. There you go. No raw. I concur. Great minds think alike. Mike said, next you're going to take out the vodka too. There is no way that I would... I'll tell you what. If we go back and this is over tomorrow, I will take a drink of vodka for you. Uh, I, I don't drink though. It's just not my thing. I know a lot of people do. No problem. Not judging. Just, just, just not my jam, as they say. Do meats and other animal products carry the virus? A lot of people ask that question because they know it came from an animal. Um, uh, and the answer is no. So the literature that we got said it does not carry. Again, don't eat raw meat, obviously. Cook the meat. Again, a most sensible thing. Eat everything that is cooked that you can. No update? Are foods eaten now like fruits and vegetables safe? Again, obviously the vegetables you're going to cook, you better scrub the fruit. I've limited my fruits drastically or we've put them together in a parfait and just heated it just a little bit. I know warm fruit taste is, is interesting. However, it still tastes pretty good and if anything, it tastes a little sweeter. Should you watch your produce differently than your normal method? You should have always watched your produce because how many times have you seen people touch it? So no, but I, in my opinion, please be cautious. Um, can you pick up the virus from food packaging? Again, it's a great question. Viruses do live on plastic. So if somebody touches it that has the virus, remember, you can get the virus on your hand. You can get the virus on your clothes. That doesn't mean you get the virus. You can just be a carrier for it because you rub against or touch somebody. It's when you put it in this 
nasal pharynx manner in here, that's when it gets in because it's an upper respiratory infection. Would I want to touch anything that had the virus? No, but if you're wearing gloves and you get rid of the gloves, if you're washing your hands, no, you should be good. Um, should you avoid um, takeout or delivery from restaurants? The answer is no, you shouldn't avoid it. Again, it here, don't bring the bag in your house, leave it outside, leave it outside for 24 hours, bring in the, the cartons, use gloves, take the food out, put the cartons back outside, clean down the um, cabinet, the table, top, whatever it is that you're eating, and go for it. Who are at risk for super spreading? Who are at risk for super spreading? Those people who are not taking caution. Those people who believe that it can't be spread. Um, and those people who have comorbidities are the ones who are unfortunately um, may get it. You know, we're very fortunate uh, in a lot of the states are really not having that much. They're using New York, unfortunately, or fortunately as a Petri dish. So um, clearly um, the, the population density, everybody, uh, you know, hurting in New York, uh, Central Park probably wasn't the brightest thing in the world. Um, but those who are just, you know, constant. And I, I think, unfortunately, some of the doctors, um, they're doing a great job of protecting themselves and wearing all their gear. Like I said, tomorrow the phlebotomist is coming with hazmed um, and we're going to wear a mask and walk outside. Do the best, you do the best you can and, you know, you have to keep your immune system strong because you have to keep your immune system strong to ward it off and clearly decrease, if you get it, that cytokine storm. Remember, for seven days, viral replication, next seven, cytokine storm. Pierre wants to know what's the difference between glutathione and reduced glutathione? Uh, well, you know, here, here's my answer to that. So somebody asked, what's the difference, great question, Pierre, between glutathione and reduced glutathione? So my answer is not really answering you. I'm not dodging you. I only use L-glutathione. NAC, um, N-acetylcysteine, is a great precursor to glutathione and has been shown to help with upper respiratory. But nothing's better than L, lipo. L-glutathione, and I like the liposomal form because, and nobody knows more about glutathione than Dr. Mike Powell. So if Mike, you want to go in and answer that in a comment and then maybe later on your Facebook, I greatly appreciate that. Glutathione, the master antioxidant, stimulates the NRF2 pathway, which we now are talking about again. And that antioxidant pathway is in phase two of detoxification of the liver, which gives us antioxidants which decrease free radicals and allow us to stay in a healthier state. Mitch Shooks, thanks you for the info on the antibody test. Terrific, Mitch. Did you order it? So let us know. And let us know how you're doing. DM me so everybody doesn't hear your results. Um, okay. That's it so far. I'll let a few more come in. I know they're going to start coming in. So... Um, I, I just want to tell everybody once again that at four o'clock today, I'm going to do a second Facebook Live. In that Facebook Live, I'm going to have James White, CEO of KBMO, and I'm going to have Dr. Brent on, Brett Dorval. And he was the uh, gentleman who, made, who uh, isolated the 60-second HIV test. They're going to talk about the antibody tests, the COVID-19 antibody test. They're going to tell you all the differences, what it is, why you want to do it, what it means. I'm going to facilitate everything. So I'll have them both on. So if you have, you know, if you have a moment... Check back in at 4 o'clock. Remember, tomorrow, once again, it's Monday to Friday, 1 o'clock, always talking about health updates. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about some health updates. Our intention is how to, how to shop, how to, what to look for, how to shop, and um, some food uh, kind of choices. Yes? Doro Hanberger wants to know what about now and acetylglutathione? Um... So they asked about now and acetyl uh, glutathione. For me, it's still the, lipo the L form of the glutathione without question is going to be the first. I know there's a lot of questions about glutathione. So Mike, again, um, I'm bringing in part of my group. Mike, answer that question for that gentleman if you could in the comment section. Seth Hogan, can you verify the doses on ALC? ALC, hold on. Help me out with ALC. ALC, day dandel to acetyl L cup. Oh, acetyl L-carnitine. Thanks, Dave. I do appreciate that. Dosage on acetyl L-carnitine. Acetyl L-carnitine is a great product. I'm not using it now for COVID-19. What I like about acetyl L-carnitine is that it energizes the brain. Not that that's a bad thing to do. Uh, Dave is a great guy. Dave works for Purity Coffee. I had it this morning. Big shout out. Thanks for listening. Good friend of mine from an old nutrition company. Can't say the name. Uh, but... <laughs> 
but a good friend of mine and, and does a great job. I wish him well where he is now. I hope everybody stays safe. I hope everybody's well. Um, it's always a pleasure. And um, it's Dr. Rob, always yours in health.